Hello and thank you for watching. This is STSC back again with LEGO Transformers Scorn. Scorn was one of the Dinobots originally created for Transformers Age of Extinction. However, this build is not meant to represent that design. Honestly, I don't really like how he looked in the movie. I just think he looks kind of dumb. But I do really love how he looked in the toys. Scorn's original toys were probably based off of concept art, so they looked a fair bit different from how he did in the movie. He was a lot more sleek, only had a single spine, and in general I just think looked a lot cooler. So while I'm not really interested at all in building his movie appearance, I did want a mock that resembled his original toys. So, a couple years ago, actually, I built a G1 version of him. At the time, he was one of my most popular videos, and I honestly still really like how the robot mode looks, but I think the dinosaur mode is a little bit lacking. Interestingly, that build was actually what started me down the path of doing larger-scale Transformers. But now that I've been back to making small-scale stuff for a while, I wanted a new Scorn that fit my current builds. So I built this version, and I have to say I'm really happy with how it turned out. Of course, I'm sure dinosaur fanatics are pretty upset right now since this is not a very scientifically accurate Spinosaurus. I based it off of what the toys did, which is kind of the Jurassic Park 3 look where it's kind of just a cooler T-Rex. And honestly, that's the Spinosaurus I like. <laughs> Nowadays, I think they kind of depict it more walking on all fours. Uh, just the transformation I wanted to do, that wouldn't have really worked out. You'll see when I get to the robot mode. And, uh, honestly, I just think this looks cooler. And since he is supposed to be kind of a G1 version, I think it makes sense that he would be an outdated version of the dinosaur, just like Grimlock was a T-Rex that stood upright. Earlier, I turned him around for a second, I just want to go back to that. As you can see, just due to his transformation, he is asymmetrical. Uh, this side has no yellow on it. I could have made it yellow. Uh, it just would have meant finding <laughs> these inverted slopes in yellow in my collection. And I'm pretty sure I only have the two of them. And frankly, I have no clue where they are. So I just went with the asymmetry. And personally, I don't really care. It just doesn't bother me. The asymmetry does go further. And you'll notice that his entire upper body is a little bit offset. You can see here that there's a lot more space between this thigh and the side of the body than this thigh and the other side. And also you'll see that the joint where the head is connected is off-center. Same thing at the tail. In fact, even the spine is not necessarily on center. Uh, that is maybe a big deal to someone, but to me it's so barely noticeable when you're just looking at the dinosaur that frankly I just don't care. I've built his arms very simply using these little macaroni pieces. I do think it looks a little bit odd compared to the rest of the dinosaur, but it helps in robot mode and I don't think it looks too bad. For articulation, the head can look left and right on this joint as well as swivel a little bit. It can also kind of look up here, though I think it looks pretty awkward like it's broken his neck. It can also look up just a little bit at this joint, which actually makes it easier to reach his jaw, which hinges on these clips as well as on this very tight connection. So it can be a little bit fragile, but there you have his mouth open. His tail is connected by the same kind of joint as the neck, so it gets all the same kind of movement, but there is no other joints unlike the neck because I wanted a nice rigid tail in robot mode. Unfortunately, there isn't really any meaningful articulation in the legs. There's no pivot at the thigh, and the closest thing is this joint, which just looks bad. He can, luckily, splay out the legs just a little bit to make it look a little bit more dynamic. And if you kind of fiddle with it, you can actually bring the legs out. But unfortunately, there's no ankle pivot to help with posing. But the ankle is able to rotate and hinge like that. For a size comparison, here we have a minifigure. And here we have Oversteer. That's all there is to say about Dino Mode, so now it's time to transform.
And here we have Scorn in his robot mode. And right off the bat, I want to say that I really love how this looks. You can see that I went for the full-on dino head hand. The original toys had a real hand that could fold out, but I knew I would never actually use that if I implemented it, so I just kept the head as is. I had a bit of a hard time trying to figure out how to have the spine form his winglets in robot mode, but eventually I came up with this solution, which is really simple, and while it isn't quite the look I was originally going for, I think it looks pretty damn cool. I really love how his lower body transforms. The shift of the dino thighs into the robot shins was the first thing I came up with, and I think it looks really clean, though it can be a little bit fiddly trying to rotate the ankles. I also really love the way the dino arms form hip guards here. For size comparison, here we have a minifigure, and here we have oversteer. For articulation, Scorn's head can look up and down. It can also look left and right, though it is obviously hindered by the spines on either side. For the tail arm, there's a universal joint at the shoulder. It is a little bit hindered, again, by the spine, but you can get a decent range out of it. Then you have a 90 degree bend at the elbow, as well as a swivel, though it's really not very useful since he doesn't have a hand. In the other arm, he has the same universal joint and the same 90 degree bend, and of course the jaw can open, but it's a pain and I showed it in the last mode, so I'm not going to go through it again. Something I'm really happy about is that he has a waist swivel and an ab crunch. In the legs, he has a universal hip, which allows the leg to swing forward and back and in and out. Then he has a universal knee, which allows for a swivel and a 90 degree bend. And then his toe can swivel to do a kind of ankle pivot. The ankle is also on a pivot here. And if you move the dino foot out of the way, you can get a decent range. Scorn is easily the most articulated transformer I've built in a long time. So it's very fun to see what kind of poses you can get him into. And I think he looks pretty great in all of them. All in all, I think this guy was a huge success. I love his dinosaur mode, I love his transformation, I love his robot mode, and I love his articulation. Honestly, the one thing he's missing is some hip movement in dinosaur mode, and a bicep swivel in robot mode. And who knows, maybe I'll add those one day. But for now, I am just super happy with this build. But that's all I have to say about him, so I'll see you next time.